Bethesda's next generational game that's coming out, Starfield, seemingly has had a lot of the gameplay footage leaked online. But now we're going to look at the person behind it because apparently they were arrested. Starfield, there's apparently copies in the wild and I don't know how many are out there because it seems that a pallet full of this game made it out of the warehouse and into the hands of this person that was arrested over the situation of it. Um, they've been booked for up to $10,000 being uh, being placed there. That's a lot of copies of this game, if that's the case. That would have been a pallet full that came that left the warehouse. This is like another Gen Con situation. Did he see what happened at Gen Con and just did a copycat with Starfield? It's very interesting to hear about these certain things. After he leaked 45 minutes of the gameplay online, apparently off another television, he's been booked on felony charges. Now, who is this person? It seems it is Darren... Tyrone Harris or Dan Tyrone Harris, uh, Mr. Harris here, uh, has been arrested. The man revealed uh, as the Starfield leaker who has leaked the game's first half hour has now been arrested. Um, the first 30 minutes were leaked by Tyrone on a on a gameplay video recorded on his phone pointed at a television screen. Uh, he, he also had a store in an online platform Mary Kart, where he sold Starfield copies, including the deluxe edition alongside other games. Surprisingly, uh, his arrest was not directly connected to Bethesda's upcoming title, but instead for theft and marijuana possession. Marijuana possession. He he was booked for marijuana possession. Who gets booked on that nowadays? I thought it was uh, decriminalized almost everywhere. I guess some places in the States, including Tennessee, I guess they're not. But it's very interesting to see. Uh, he also posted a short video, seemingly dedicated, uh, directed at the Bethesda director Todd uh, Todd Howard, praising the game. Let's take a look at this. Todd, no offense, man. <laughs> That's a good game. How much did you smoke before this video? Because I gotta say, I, are you able to see straight? Perfect timing. About leaving the earth and all that. It's good stuff. He's talking about leaving earth because, you know, that's what this game is going to be. It's going to be a trip for this game of Starfield. Let's take a closer look at the game footage. Okay, well, it's rated M, Mature 17. I'm going to kill the volume here and actually just go over it. Uh, you know, I did watch this trailer once already. It looks pretty good. Reminds me of No Man's Sky with the idea of Skyrim involved there, where it's... You, you kind of have a questing scenario. The one thing I don't know and don't understand, is this a multiplayer game or is this a solo game? Um, because I got to say, a multiplayer mod for this might open up this game entirely if that's not the case. Uh, I haven't looked in too much about it. I hear about it here and there, but I don't have all the time in the world to sit there and watch trailers to, to research all the games in the world and I gotta say the trailer itself to me looks pretty good let's skip ahead here yeah it's 25 years in the making you know there's certain things here I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of interesting uh, about the club scene and the cities that are going on here you've got the space battles I gotta say it for me it feels like that old school Star Wars vibe to it it's going to be a very interesting scenario hopefully in the very near future this this part here with the the combat like you've got guns you got swords you've got combat meaning you're going to be able to pick up things it's gonna feel like borderlands 2 i think or borderlands 1 uh with that idea where you pick things up are my question is are you going to be able to pick up good items are you going to quest for items like you did in skyrim like you, you've got quests in skyrim where you go out and you find like a crazy bow that makes you invisible are you going to have things in here? It, I, it, to me, it doesn't look like magic is a thing, but it, they, they take a different approach entirely. Are you going to be upgrading your ship like you do in No Man's Sky? It doesn't look like it has the sandbox feel to it where you build yourself a base, but it does feel like you will always have a place to go back home like they do in Skyrim. 
Um, this looks like a uh, Stargate of sorts where you're able to teleport to areas much faster. I know in some of the, I, I, I think it was a mod in Skyrim where you kind of had a hub where you can go around and I, I think that was in Skyrim. But it looks, it looks pretty good to me. Um, there's a lot of hype on this one and this might be the game of the decade. Now on top of everything with Starfield, uh, the old Diablo 2 developer by the name of Grums actually came out and uh, um, had some, uh, It's people are calling it a controversial take on the start screen of Starfield. It's a very simplistic start screen for Starfield, but of course so with Skyrim. Skyrim just has the, the, the Skyrim logo on it with some music playing in the background and a very basic start menu. If you look at like Final Fantasy 7, the original one for the PS, uh, PS1, it, it didn't even have anything crazy. You had Cloud Sword in the middle there and then you just have the new game and continue menu. It wasn't anything crazy and these games were absolutely amazing. Although I gotta say Final Fantasy 7 for the PS1 it was an unfinished game when it originally came out. We will have to wait to see if Starfield will be there. And I've heard I've heard some modding aspects to Starfield where you're going to be able to create your own world and be able to mod it in there as its own sort of quest in that sense. So Starfield just around the corner. Here, here's his uh, thing. The physiognomy of start screens. The start screen of a new of a game can reveal a lot about how rushed the team was and how much pride they um, they took in their work. Starfield start screen either shows a hastily shipped deadlines by a passionate team overworked or a team that didn't care. Now this it's a bad take from uh, from a lot of people and it's not even that it's a tame take honestly it's just someone coming out there but this thing has gotten almost 10 million views you've got people just lighting them up in the replies over it it was it's something that just created a controversy and it doesn't make any sense that it went this far yeah he, he used to be the developer for diablo 2 but the start screen menu, that's not the base of the game, and but it is also the, the opening of the game. And so it's very strange to have this. Now, a very simplistic start screen, does that mean you're, you're not going to enjoy the game going into it? And uh, are you even going to spend a lot of time at the start screen? And that's what it comes down to. I know with Final Fantasy VII, you booted the game, the start screen came on, and you just clicked as fast as you could to get past it because you wanted to get into the game. And that's why I think this is uh, going to be this way. Same with Skyrim. You don't sit there on the start screen menu waiting and doing stuff on it. You click past it as fast as possible to play the game. Well, I hope you like this one. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix in the Shadow signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, share this out there with someone that maybe wants to hear about the, the drama stuff behind Starfield. Because it's been, I, it's been interesting to sit back and watch this one from afar. Uh, the game looks great. I'm hoping maybe I can play it, but we'll have to wait to see. The price point is up there for a game, um, and I just had to fork over a lot of my money to repair a few items around here. Um, until next time, you guys have a great day. I will see you again very soon. <laughs>